Hello, here we are again. I've got some more questions for David, but first of all, I'm going to read a scripture, the two verses from Ephesians. It's Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Okay. Well, hello, David. Hello. The first question is... Some people say they are Christians because they were brought up in a Christian home and they were christened as babies. What are your views on this? Well, no, you can't become a Christian by just being brought up in a Christian home and be christened. Uh, as, I was christened as a baby, but that didn't make me a Christian, although my family thought I was a Christian because I'd been you know, sprinkled with water in the Church of England church. I also went to a, uh, a Church of England school, went to Sunday school. My, my dad was Roman Catholic, my mother was the Church of England. And I went to, even after I got fed up with the Church of England school, I went to the Roman Catholic school. I went to, uh, I, I went to the Rosary Beast and everything. I went to church every morning with the nuns and so on. So none of that made me a Christian. No. Um, you know, it, it, baptism, you know, talking about sprinkling with water, baptism for believers only. A child can't believe. If a, child, if a little baby dies, it goes straight to heaven because it doesn't believe. It doesn't know, have a knowledge of sin or anything. So. Right, yeah, thank you. Well, how old were you when you became a Christian? 25 years old. Right, but how did it happen? How did you become a Christian? Uh, well, it's quite a long story, but I'll cut it short the best way I can. Uh, it was a series of events, really, because there's quite a number of people did witness to me. Um, I can always remember when I used to go to my local coffee bar, uh, the Baptist church used to come in and witness to me. Yeah. And I loved it when they came in because I had my own views, my own philosophies, and I was very good at arguing. So I, I just ripped them to bits because I had no respect for them. And yeah. then uh, I had a friend who had he'd become a Christian, he got born again in the Pentecostal church, and he, I used to knock around with him on his motorbike, and then he came to see me, come, came round to my house one day, he said, do you want to go for a walk? So we went for a walk on the beach, started talking to me about the Lord, and I said, look, that's okay, I, I, I'd like to talk with him, we're friends and that, but if we're going for a walk, don't talk to me about Jesus Christ. Because, because quite honest, I hated Jesus Christ, I literally hated him. You know, um, later on I had a view on God, but it was a Hindu view, but I actually hated Jesus Christ. And then, um, what was the other incident? I had, um, yes, then when I, I went to India then, uh, overland to India, that took quite a number of weeks. We went through all the countries, um, Turkey, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, not in that order. Yeah. But when we were in Kabul, one of the persons on the bus had gone to Floyd McClung, who was an evangelist, uh, uh, set up there, helping people become Christians there and witnessing to them. And she'd become a Christian there, and she was a, a black girl, and she lived in America, and, uh, and, and she invited us to go along. And I was halfway there, and I changed my mind. I didn't want to go. It must have been the devil. But eventually okay. we got a letter from her, uh, from America, I think it was Hawaii or America, but she'd become a Christian, got married to a Christian man, and she was getting married in Hawaii, and she, she invited us to the wedding. Didn't go, it was too far. Um, <laughs> what happened, I came back from India, and a friend of mine who had been into the drug scene came round to see me, and I couldn't believe him. They changed him, he was transformed. He was, he was in a white suit, he looked healthy, he, his eyes were shiny, he was absolutely like a new man. He was a new man. And he witnessed right. to me about the Lord anyway. He, uh, cutting a long story short, he was going back to Manchester that day. We, we, I was in St. Anthony at the time, about 40 miles away. And I was going back to the same place as he was, coincidentally. And he invited me along to his church. So out of manners, because he'd come to see me, I went along. Yeah. I had long hair, I walked in the church. There was full of people and young people. He took me right to the front. And all these people saying, I love you, Jesus, I praise you, Jesus. And I thought, what am I doing in here? I've got longer. I felt yeah. the odd one out. And I was sitting on the front row anyway. He started pre, and I didn't dare look behind me because everyone was going, praise you, Jesus, and all that, you know. And uh, he started preaching. I did can't really remember the message. He preached the gospel. But I can remember some words he said, and he said, you can't even turn the radio on today without all the filth spewing out of it. Anyway, at the end, he made an appeal, but I knew I was not confronted with a man who was preaching. I was confronted with God Almighty, and I had a fear of God in me. And the presence of God was awesome there, but the devil said, if you go forward, everyone's going to look at you, and uh, you've got to go back and face your family and all your friends, and that house you've been staying at, and, and what will your yeah. friends think, and your neighbours and all the rest. And uh, so he's trying to intimidate me like that. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, but you might not get another chance. So I just held my breath, and like you would if you were learning to jump into the deep end and swimming bass. I, I lunged forward. He made an appeal to step forward. And when I went forward, I didn't even say a prayer or anything. The Holy Spirit came in. I was born again. 
because I believed. I, t I chose God in my heart. It's from yeah. your heart, you see. It's from your heart, you believe. And uh, and then I was just absolutely full of the Holy Spirit. And uh, and, and I've followed the Lord ever since, you know. And um, it was quite an amazing experience, you know, that. Yeah, well, f thanks for that. I mean, that's what it really means to be a Christian, isn't it? Not just where you've been brought up. Absolutely. I'm, I'm saying all that in a nutshell. If I had to write the story of my life, uh, all about how I came to know the Lord, I could write a book on it. Okay, well, what message do you have for people listening to this message who are not Christians but want to be? Um, well, first of all, don't believe that you are, are a Christian because you've been brought up in a Christian home or that you have an idea about God or you believe in Jesus with your head. That's not enough. Um, or being christened or, you know, saying, well, I've been a good person all my life. That, that saying a good person all your life and all those things is self-righteousness and God will not accept you on that basis. You see, Jesus died on the cross as your substitute sin bear. You should have been punished for your sin, but Jesus took your punishment for you. And the only way you can be saved is to believe that, that Jesus took the penalty of your sin upon the cross. And it, and, and the only way you can can become a Christian is to repent of your sin. You've got to acknowledge your sin. The Bible says all have sinned. That means you. And none of us are righteous. And the only way you can be saved is ask Jesus to forgive you and to come into your life by his spirit. And he comes in by his spirit into your heart. Then you become a Christian. So that's the big stumbling block with everybody. A lot of people don't like to admit they're sinners. Yeah. And... Um, and that's the stumbling block. It's pride that stops people coming to know the Lord. They think they know it all. I thought I knew it all. I, I was full of my own ideas. My philosophy was a Hindu philosophy. I believed in God after a while because uh, it was kind of, but it was a Hindu type of God that all roads lead to God. But when it came to uh, believing God through Jesus, oh no, I hate Jesus Christ, get him out of the way. But you see, it's only through Jesus because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's the only way. Every other religion in this world is wrong except the Christian faith because the only way to God is through Jesus. None of those preach Jesus and none of their gods have risen from the dead like Jesus. He's here today and he's alive because how do I know he's alive? Because he's a living Christ, my per personal friend and saviour, because he lives in my heart by his spirit and one day he's going to return to this earth and we'll see him physically, the Son of God, God himself, Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. So that's what you need to do. If you want to be a Christian, you need to come to Jesus. Don't believe you were born one, but you can become one if you repent and come to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you.